Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service. 29th of November. Can you believe it? The year's nearly over. But it's nice to be able to worship you again with you this morning. Again, just, yeah, just a reminder that we're currently closed. COVID's quite hectic in town, but that's fine. We'll, we, we'll get there. We still get the message out. That's the beauty of God. He's with us wherever we are. Um, at this stage, we're still not sure what we're going to do for Christmas services, but we will we'll keep you posted. But please, 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 and I can't stress this enough. Please, please, please stay safe. COVID is real. Um, and it's quite hectic as it's ravaging our town at the moment. So please be careful. For our call to worship this morning, like I said, can you believe this? it's November? But also, can you believe there's only four Sundays left until we celebrate Christmas? Until a child, unto us, a child is born. That means that this Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. And we would normally pause and light a candle. Which, sadly, we can't do this here in the church, but we can still say, O oh God, as we light the first candle of Advent, we kindle it with hope, and we hope and we long for you to come to our world, to break through and to reign with compassion, justice, and peace. The prophet Isaiah also cried out to you, God, tear open heaven and come down calling us, God's people, to do what is right, to submit to the potter's hand. So this Advent, Lord, we call out to you, creator of the world, to break through all that keeps us from you. We ask for mercy and that you reform us in your image. This Advent, Lord, visit us with your justice, your love, and your peace. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come into your house, into your presence this morning to worship, to acknowledge you as God, to just slow down for a bit and just give time to you, to honor you, so that you may feed us, that you may nourish us. Father, we acknowledge that you are God, the great I am. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for seeing us through till the end of November. And Lord, you will see us through to eternity. So thank you for each person that is listening to this broadcast. To each person that will share this broadcast. To each person that you will touch and change through this message. Lord, thank you that our Savior, unto us a child is born, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came, died, so that we may be reunited with you, that we may repent, turn to you, give ourselves to you in all that we are, Lord, so that you may cleanse us, shape us, mold us, uh, <clears throat> as the potter does the clay. So Lord, guide us today. Feed us, nourish us through word and message. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Isaiah, my favorite book in the Bible, Isaiah. Um, and it's such a nice, nice book to visit as we go through Advent, as we approach Christmas. Isaiah 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. And when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to help those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. 
How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name, or strives to hold, lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O oh Lord, do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are your people. Just that, Father, this morning, and we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. It's been an interesting year, and no one, I don't think, can deny that in any way. And a year that, as I said, is heading to its climax for us as Christians, Christ, uh, Christmas, um, and like I said, four Sundays away. A Christmas that is going to be interesting, because at this stage, we don't know what we'll do, and we'll probably at this stage be spending time on podcasts and broadcasts. Um, but share the video, share the joy, share the wonder of the birth of Jesus. Carol singing at this stage, still, the carols will be still this year. Um, but please pray, please play a few at home. Um, don't miss out on the joy of Christmas, the celebration of the birth of our Savior. And always remember the good news remains. God is with us. Emmanuel, no matter where we are. For today's reading, I've just, yeah, I didn't want to go into a heavy message, and I just thought, let me share a couple of the verses that stood out for me, that really touched me as I was preparing. Verses that, in a sense, we already heard through our Advent reading. And it might seem repetitive, but the truth be told, there is nothing like repetition to get something stuck into this old noggin, especially mine, um, but to sit in fertile soil. So let's, let's just read it again and again and know the beauty and wonder of our Lord and Savior. So starting with verse 1, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. I'm sure, like me, many of us have wondered if this was it, if this was the end times, um, or if this was the time for Jesus to come again. You know, all these thoughts, all these conversations have transpired. And ironically, 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah felt the same way. For you and I, some 2,000 years after Jesus was born, um, Maybe we've sat and just prayed a while. That wonderful verse in Revelation 22, verse 20. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. So be it. We need you now, Lord. Seriously, we need you now more than ever. As your people, as a world, we need you now. The next was verse 2. Similar vein, come down and make your name known. For me, as I read that, um, an amazing hymn came to mind. And I'm going to read the whole hymn. I know we're not singing, and but I need to read this uh, amazing hymn. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. It is the Father's pleasure. We should call him Lord who from the very beginning was the mighty word. Humbled for a season to receive a name from the lips of sinners, unto he came. Faithfully he bore it, spotless to the last, brought it back victorious from death he passed. Name him, brothers, name him, with love strong as death, but with awe and wonder and with bated breath. He is God the Savior. He is Christ the Lord, ever to be worshipped, trusted, and adored. It's amazing. It's beautiful. In your hearts, 
Christmas in your hearts, enthrone Him, let Him subdue all that is not holy, all that is not true. Crown Him as your captain in temptation's hour. Let His will enfold you in its light and power. Brothers, this Lord Jesus <coughs> shall return again with His Father's glory, with His angel train. For all wreaths of empire meet upon His brow, and our hearts confess Him King of glory now. What a hymn. What an amazing hymn. Isn't that what Christmas is about? This amazing Savior that came for us, that brought Himself down from heaven, humbled Himself, and became just like us. The King of glory now. That's what we have before us. <coughs> Emmanuel, God with us. Admittedly, in the world today, we've got Christmas all skewed, all strange. We've got Christmas trees, mistletoe, sweets, presents, Father Christmas, overeating, indulgences. But we know, we know, you and I know, the world knows, Jesus has come. And Jesus will come again. Thirdly, I was struck by the, the double picture of God in our lives and the work that He does. <coughs> Sorry. Firstly, in verse 5, Isaiah says, You came to help. Or you come to help. In the present tense, you came to help through your son Jesus. That's the gift of Christmas. You came to help. The second being verse 8. Your continued loving, compassionate, just involvement in our lives. Isaiah writes, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. We are God's work in progress. So to the world this Advent, I want to say, Please be patient with me. God is still busy with me. And I think that applies to all of us. God is busy with us. May this Advent be a time where we allow God to work so amazingly. Like I said, I'm not sure what Christmas is going to be this year. Um, no carols. No, I, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. But I do know Jesus is still with us. Jesus is still working on us, guiding us, leading us, shaping us, molding us, turning us into His likeness. So I trust that you will be blessed as He shapes and molds you this Advent. Fourthly, and this is, I want to say seriously, we would be amiss if we did not stop, even during Advent, to look at who we are what we do, and even what we don't do, that we should be doing. Isaiah simply says in verse 5, we continue to sin. It can't be any clearer than that. We continue to sin. Verse 6, we are unclean, he says. In fact, his exact words are, our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Yo, that's a bit rough. Anything that we think we're doing properly is like a filthy rag. But harsh. Verse 7. We don't give God the time of day. Isaiah says, No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. That whole idea, the whole notion of Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. That's what we miss out on. Calling God, looking for God. An idea that often causes me to pause and just wonder how David could write so, I'm just trying to think of a word, passionately of his desire for God. In Psalm 42 verse 1, As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. 
May that be our desire this year as we spend Christmas with family, with friends, as we journey towards the birth of Jesus, that our souls be invigorated, renewed, quenched as a deer seeks for water, pants for water, says David. And finally, I think this morning, again, short messages, um, but I believe very powerful. God is speaking so wonderfully to us at the moment. Um, where does that leave us today? You know, this whole idea of who God is, this idea of God coming down, um, who we are, what we are. Where does that leave us today? In this Advent, this first Sunday of Advent, in these tumultuous and uncertain times. Well, maybe just to pray. Just to pray. That sounds very ironic. <laughs> it's always funny. I remember someone sharing about the Wild West. You know, you always see the, the Lone Ranger type character pitching up. And the minister says, I'll go with you, the priest. I'll go with you. And um, the Lone Ranger would always turn around and comment something like, No, you stay here. This is dangerous work. You just pray. You just pray. Maybe we just need to pray. Maybe we need to get on our knees and pray verse 9 of today's reading. And it says this, and I'm adding the word please. Please do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O please look upon us, we pray, because we are your people. May that be our prayer this Advent. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Please look upon us, we pray, for we are your people. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I want to thank you for the message this morning, this picture of Isaiah's desire, the word in Revelation, come Lord Jesus, come. Rend the heavens. And I think it asks for us or begs the question of us, Lord, if we're ready for you to come. If we want you to come. And it's challenging. Lord, are we prepared to acknowledge that we are sinners? Are we prepared to give ourselves to you so that you may shape us and mold us and, and just guide us and lead us and, and embrace us in all that you are? It's really challenging, Lord. But our prayer is simply this, Lord. Isaiah verse 9. Don't be angry, Lord. Don't be angry beyond measure. Don't remember our sins forever. Lord, we pray as the psalmist reminds us to remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. But Lord, always to remember that we are your people. That we love you because you love us. So Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we also take time out again this morning to pray for our town. All the people that are affected and infected and all those things with COVID-19. Those that are affected by unemployment. Lack of income. Resources. Father, may we just stand together. May we stop burning and breaking and rather look at how we can build up. Turn our hearts away from destruction and towards construction. Lord, we pray all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you've been truly, truly blessed and that God has spoken loudly. 
Oh, maybe you can light your own candle um, and remind us that Jesus, the light of the world, is with us always. So I say to us this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Love God's world. Have an amazing Advent. Think of the birth of the miracle of Christmas. Because it's quite quite evident in Christmas that Jesus loves you. <laughs>